opportunity to address the commission on items that are on the agenda. All of the requests that I have do specifically relate to the uh, uh, general circular 211 and some of the proposed changes, so I would mm -hmm. defer those comments until we get to that particular item on the agenda. So that brings up next the director's report. Mr. Chairman, um, I thought since uh, I had a few items on the director's report, rather than uh, having you look at the back of my head, it would be a little better if I spoke to you from this angle. Maybe a matter of perspective. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, I can put my mask on. Um, I just wanted to briefly give you an update on, on some things that uh, have occurred since the last meeting uh, and some follow up to uh, questions that were asked uh, at, at previous meetings. So, um, but first, I wanted to, to uh, remind you, of, you are already aware, uh, about Mr. Cantrell's resignation. Uh, he did submit his resignation on August 14th that he would uh, resign his seat on the commission. Uh, his son qualified for a candidate for judge and therefore he's stepping down so that there'd be no conflict with any of his future political activities. In his resignation letter, Mr. Cantrell advised the governor that he could not have received better treatment than he received by the persons with whom he worked. Uh, and uh, as a result of his resignation, Dr. Brewer, the president of Louisiana College, was contacted on the day I received the letter, and he is compiling his nominees for the governor's consideration, which is which should be by early next week. And then, in your binders, there's a tab called 2020 Promotional Exam Review. We were able to administer the, the promotional exam. It was in a different format and in different locations, but we were able to get it done. And I have to commend the, uh, the individuals that I work with at Louisiana State Police um, on uh, their assistance and ensuring that we were able to acquire uh, some locations. We worked with the folks in Shreveport and uh, in Alexandria to make sure that we were able to locate some space to hold the, the meeting and the, uh, the test. So it was, uh, it, it went well. There were uh, 264 registered and 238 actually took the exam. Uh, the charts that are in, the, in your binder show the exam scores from 2015 to 2020 uh, with the note that 2018 was the first year we transitioned the written portion of the exam to a multiple choice uh, scenario based format. But for the most part, the exam scores, especially from 2019 to 2020, have been fairly consistent. Uh, and I've responded to each of the comments and requests for review that we've received. Some testers raised concerns that perhaps it isn't fair to consolidate every year. Uh, and that isn't necessarily the intention to, to consolidate, but in working with the test administrator and the subject matter experts, we felt that it was that we could consolidate. And, and honestly, thankfully, we did consolidate 2020 because it would have been uh, very difficult to uh, find a location for uh, over 500 testers if we did a mandatory retest this year. But uh, in responding to, to complaints uh, or and comments, uh, I did uh, ensure the, the individuals that there is test validity that is monitored through mechanisms such as embedded test questions across the years that we administer these tests. And we found no issues or deviations this test cycle. But that being said, this was the third year that we've consolidated the exam results. So um, we feel that it is a bit cumbersome because we ensure that the names on the promotional list are only those that are actually eligible to promote. So if someone took the exam in, in 2018 and they were a sergeant at the time competing for a lieutenant score and then has been subsequently been promoted to lieutenant, we made sure that individual's name was not on the lieutenant eligible list and his score was not on the list when we did the consolidation. So that way, you're only competing against those that are actually eligible to promote. But uh, as we com compile these, it becomes a bit cumbersome. So that in mind, uh, we, are, we will be working with the test administrator and likely make plans for a mandatory retest in 2021. Any questions? Right uh, the 
next item uh, is, not, is nothing in your packet, but it's something I just wanted to call your attention to. Uh, on Friday afternoon, um, I was asked to appear before the Community Relations slash Internal Operations Subcommittee of the Police Training Screening de Escalation Task Force. Mouthful. Uh, <laughs> Representative Ted James serves as chairman of that subcommittee. Uh, and um, I was merely advised to be in attendance and bring a copy of the State Police Committee rules, which I did, and I provided him with a copy as well. Um, there were over three hours of presentations and comments provided by individual stakeholders, uh, organizations that look to affect change uh, with regards to policing and de escalation. And, uh, and after approximately three hours, Chairman James asked me to speak before the subcommittee. I gave a brief overview of the constitutional responsibilities of this commission, its role as a rulemaking authority, and its exec exclusive power and authority to hear and decide disciplinary appeals for the State Police Service. I was able to provide answers to specific questions asked, primarily regarding to details within Chapter 12 of the rules, uh, and I was Thank you for appearing with the, uh, with the understanding that they will likely be calling me back for, for future meetings. So just wanted to make you aware that occurred on Tuesday. And then it, uh, we have a follow-up to something that was in my, one of my previous director's reports, or some questions asked by uh, commissioners. Uh, and one of those was the we were looking into the Family First uh, Coronavirus Response Act uh, and how it impacted with, or how it related with school attendance for uh, family members of, of those that are in state service. Um, and in your binder you'll see uh, the information that was just recently added uh, to the question and answer portion by the Department of Labor uh, as recent as August 27th. And the overall conclusion is that anytime a school is physically open, then leave isn't available under the FFCRA. However, anytime that school is physically closed, including hybrid models, um, where a student is prohibited from attending uh, a specific day, uh, then leave is available under the FFCRA. Of course, this is something that state police and DPSHR will work with the employee. But it's something that we're monitoring, and I just wanted to, to follow up because the um, that was a, I believe a question, and, and I wanted to make sure we, we had that information for you. Uh, another question, I believe, Mr. Knapp, Commissioner Knapp, <laughs> uh, was uh, really regarding some of the emergency rule usage and how that uh, has been going since we uh, enacted. As a commission enacted the emergency rules back in March. Uh, and just a few of the updates. Um, since the onset of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, situation or emergency declaration in Louisiana, uh, here's approximately 59 troopers have used a special leave uh, in relation to um, 21.2B. They were asymptomatic but, but in quarantine. This is a special paid leave provision of the emergency rules. Uh, it appears that only one employee, in accordance with the rule 21.3, was specifically reported to work displaying some sort of symptoms and asked to leave. Approximately 300 employees have received overtime related to the pandemic at the time of one half rate, both exempt and non-exempt employees. And uh, 21 employees have used personal sick leave related to COVID-19. And those are employees that could potentially benefit from the proposed new rule 1135D that's coming up on the agenda. And just briefly, uh, on background on 1135, um, the proposed rule change. Again, this leave, I believe, was developed primarily in partnership with uh, Commission Administration and Civil Service for those emergency responders and healthcare workers to which uh, FFCRA was, they were excluded from participating in FFCRA. Um, so the, the special leave buckets of uh, public health and special leave and quarantine special leave weren't or aren't currently available to state police service. 
And I know there's been some questions because members of the state police service will serve alongside of members in the state civil service, such as DPS police officers. And there's a question as well, why is there leave on this side and not leave on our side? And, and the timekeepers uh, having to, to field questions regarding that. So there is a potential that uh, if Rule 1135 uh, is adopted, we would potentially access, open access uh, really for continuity purposes across the agency these potential lead buckets. And touching base on uh, again 1135B, this is viewed as an initial COVID-19 benefit and where FFCRA excluded emergency responders. And it permits the benefit up, up to 15 working days, which is 120 hours under the regular eight hour workday. Uh, a pay leave when testing positive or advised to quarantine. And once this, leave, this quota is depleted, is no longer available to the employee. So it's, it's 120 hours uh, to use, and it is available for testing positive or being advised to quarantine. It's, it's special pay leave for that purpose. Uh, and then the, the section C under 135 is intended to be a secondary benefit that can be used and occur more than one time, but it's primarily when 1135B has been exhausted and for future occurrences. And it's a May rule that the appointing authority would have in their tool belt to use should a quarantine situation occur that they could use the special paid leave uh, during the COVID-19 event. But again, I think we will be looking at that later in the, uh, in the consideration of the rules. Any questions for that? Uh, another update would be the database project. Uh, just wanted to make you aware that we were approved for uh, funding this fiscal year for a uh, database improvement project. And we're working with the Office of Technology Services, and they have commenced work on our new Trooper Cadet database uh, to replace the antiquated Box Pro system that we currently use. Um, we've had initial meetings and a detailed review of our system. I don't have a current estimated completion time at the moment. However, I will obviously keep you apprised of the status of future meetings. And uh, finally, as always, your the commission expenditures are included in your binders. And you have to answer the question. Any questions? No. That concludes my direct report. Thank you. Now we can join with any other questions. questions. Um, we'll move to um, section seven. The first item on that uh, area of the agenda is consideration of July 9, 2020 regular business meeting minutes. Do you have any questions? So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. And motion and second to approve the minutes of July 9, 2020. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The, the ayes have it. Uh, the next item is item number two, public hearing to consider proposed changes to chapter one, two, and 11 of the State Police Commission rules. Those were detailed in the general circular that was uh, promulgated number two, 211. Um, and we have three individuals who indicated that they want to make some public comments. And I'll call on Ms. Gerard first. Um, Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Michelle Brewer, and I'm an attorney for the Department of Public Safety, uh, Office of State Police, and I'm really just appearing here to let you know that the agency is in support of the rule as proposed. And the only one comment that I wanted to point out is the, it'll be quick, the rule talks about the 15 working days. There was a, just a comment about 120 hours. That's based upon eight-hour work days. So, you know, the 15 work days is consistent, but the number of hours may not be consistent depending on, you know, the work schedule. Any questions? Uh, well, I guess I, I, the question I have is, so what would be your proposal? The 15 work days is appropriate because that would be consistent for everyone, but it may not equal 120 hours for everybody depending on work schedule. Okay, uh, Ms. White, I do uh, indicate you have some, you want to speak about the proposed changes. Um, 
Yes. I'd suggest that as we go through each of the rules, if there's something in particular you would like to, to say, then let's okay. do it one sure. by one. Sure you remind us when we get okay. And Ms. Collins and Ms. Collins and Ms. Chris, if you have answer questions only. Correct. If there's any questions about 11.35 from um, the, so the Troopers Association, we represent uh, DPS Human Resources, so we can oh. clear up any confusion that might come up. sick leave as we've done in our emergency rules we've expanded sick leave to permit the employee to care for an immediate family member and utilize their sick leave uh, this further just clarifies it in our definition and then it will be uh, applied when we look at chapter one you know, I'm correct in understanding that this change would make it consistent with the family medical leave act and also would be consistent with our current emergency correct and which rule number would that it, it's not an actual number, it's just a chap an edit to chapter one to include it. Our, uh, our definitions aren't individually numbered. Do we have any uh, motions? So we would like to go through uh, each one of the chapters on this? Yeah, I, I would think, yeah, let's go through each one and then. Okay, uh, we adopt this change to chapter one. Our uh, immediate family member definition. Second. Do we have any discussion? Should we do this correctly? Is the director is we're supposed to read the, ch the change? There's no, there's no change if you approve it as as okay. published. Okay. All, right. in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes unanimously have it. Mr. Chairman, uh, the amendment of Chapter Two uh, as proposed in rule changes is to, um, again, fold in some of the provisions that we've included in our emergency chapter, chapter 21, into chapter two, primarily as it relates to uh, participating in a virtual capacity. Uh, and uh, the way we fold those in, we are looking to just completely reissue uh, rule 2.6 in this new format as, as published in the circuit. So we would remove all the old 2.6 and reissue the new 2.6. Chair, I, I think you made some comments yeah, you guess, about yeah. different ones, and I appreciate you going through that and taking the time <laughs> to do that because it is time consuming. Uh, did you want to uh, explain? Sure, sure. Uh, I, I guess maybe we should have a motion and so we can then have a motion, Mr. Chair. Second. Uh, all right. I, yeah, I do have some comments on, on just some of the wording on, on some of them. Um, in particular, if you go to Rule 2.6B, um, my suggestion would be that we delete the words, the liberations in, involving to um, it just change that word to when, and I'll read the whole thing when I, when I go through it. Uh, change the word participating to participate. Uh, add the words ap after the word after the word virtual and comma add words that participation. Um, after the words public can hear, I would add the words that participation again. 
and after the word comment, to, uh, I would add the words to all commissioners, including any participating virtually. Uh, so basically, it would read with my proposed changes, except for executive sessions, except for executive session, when commission members participate virtually, that participation must be conducted in such a manner that all members in the public can hear that participation and provide public comment to all commissioners, including any participating virtually. It doesn't change any of the substance. I just thought it would flow a little bit better with, with those changes. Any other discussion? You want to make each one individually? I, I think we can do 2.6 in total unless okay. there's you know, some more discussion. The other proposed change that I had was a change to uh, propose new rules 2.6C. Um, it says the concurrence of majority of members present. I would add the words including any participating virtually. Um, and the new, with the addition, would say the concurrence of a majority of mem of the members present, comma, including any participating virtually, comma, shall constitute, and the rest of it constitute a forum. A forum. So any other discussion on that? Because otherwise, I think we'd have an issue of whether or not a virtually participating member could count as part of the forum. The next one was Rule 2.6E, formerly D. Um, I would suggest that we change it. I'll just read the, the suggestion to how I think it should read. Temporary absence or temporary disruption of electronic communication during the consideration of an item of business that does not affect the commissioner's understanding of the issues and facts shall not disqualify a member from voting on the item. Uh, and the reason I added that in is I just wanted to make sure it was clear that obviously if there was sufficient disruption that it impacted the ability of the commissioner to fully understand the, the issues and the facts, then that would disqualify them. And that would be the suggested changes that I would make to Rule 2.6 as proposed. vote to adopt the uh, amendment that I've suggested to the proposed rules. Is wow. there any public comment? First, See, first the vote to adopt the amendments. Oh, first you vote to. And then you ask for oh, public okay. comment. I'm sorry. And then we'll Can we have a vote? <laughs> I would move that we adopt uh, the proposed changes uh, suggested by the chairman on 2.6B and C. Discussion. Okay, so let's. We need to vote to adopt those proposed changes, and then we'll take public comment, and then we'll uh, vote to adopt the final version if that's where we, we are. Okay. okay, all in favor of the proposed changes to the, the amendments to the uh, proposed rules? Aye. Uh, uh, any any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. So, is there any public comment on the proposed amendments? to the proposed rules. Hearing none, now we can vote on whether or not to adopt the final version of the proposed rules as read uh, during the meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The, eye, the ayes have it. of rules is in chapter 11, 11.13, use of sick leave, and this is being proposed to 
permit the expansion of sick leave to care for uh, immediate family members. That's the primary change. There are other modifications, but that's the primary change. And again, uh, I did have some proposed uh, very minor changes on that one. Um, mostly in, a, in appreciate uh, the director's effort to eliminate the gender positive references to the pronouns, but I think I came up with a way we could just eliminate the pronouns altogether. Um, in 11.13a, uh, I would suggest that we, instead of the current proposed change, that it would read as follows. Who has sufficient leave credit without the two and without the there? Um, um, the, my proposed change to um, 11.13.8.4 is um, a little more detailed, so I'm going to skip over that one and go to 11.13.B, which is the same sort of change. Eliminate the two there, and it's just say with sufficiently credit. Just eliminates the pronoun without changing the meaning of anything. Now, Relative to 11.13, uh, the current proposed rule says diagnosed with a high risk immuno immuno immunological disorder. And um, my suggestion was that we change that to say who has been diagnosed with a condition that is generally recognized to put that individual in a high risk category for contraction and or reaction to the health risk giving rise to the declaration. And the reason for that is right now we're all thinking about COVID and we think about the having a immune, immune, immune <laughs> thank you, uh, immunological uh, problem is what puts someone at high risk, but we don't know what the next virus or issue is going to be that causes the health risk. And we don't know what is going to create a, a higher risk and it may not be based on your immunological problem. So I just thought a more general statement would be better. And obviously, there has to be something that's well recognized and documented by, by medical sciences to creating a high risk. But that, that was the reason uh, for that suggestion change. And I'll leave it at that before we get to 1113.1. Um, Those were my suggested changes for 11.13. Any motions? I would move that we adopt your changes suggested uh, to rule 11.13a uh, as set forth. A and well, 11.13a Why don't we just do 11.13 in total with the changes that I proposed? What's the next change there? Is, is that 11.13A5? I'm not sure. On the, uh, you didn't discuss the uh, proposed one for 11.13A5. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was 13A4. Right. I'm sorry. I missed, I missed discussing A5. Okay. And um, but well, I don't. The, that was more of a. I guess I'm raising that as a question. Should we make that more of an emergency rule, um, or should we remove the reference to COVID-19? I, I would suggest we remove the reference to COVID. 19 as opposed to making an emergency rule, but I don't have your, your, the uh, circular in front of me. Which tab is it in? Uh, it's on page, it's on page 32. Oh, okay. I, I believe, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, again, as 
as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the FFCRA um, ex extends the ability for individuals to use to get paid leave. They also expense for individuals to use um, leave for, uh, for child care. Uh, but um, this expands, and the FFCRA is valid through the end of the end of this year, so December 31st, 2020. And so uh, approving this would allow the employee uh, to utilize their sick leave to care for their son or daughter uh, if there's no suitable person to care for them if their school or place of child care has been closed due to the COVID-19 situation. So I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if the agency would, um, I'm sure the agency's views on Continue to allow someone to use uh, sick leave if their if child care centers are closed. Ongoing, because if this wasn't related to COVID-19, but I, I'll leave it well, to you. And it has a sunset provision in it. Yes, right. At the end of this year. But it, I, I guess if it, if we want to keep the sunset sure. provision, provision in it, should we not just make this an emergency rule as opposed to putting it in right. a permanent set of rules? Then that that was the alternatives that I was proposing. So. Uh, if, if everybody thinks it's better to keep the sunset provision and keep the reference to COVID, then should we not make that an emergency rule as opposed to part of our permanent rules? And the alternative is to make it a more general phrase where you have the governor's order saying that it's a public health emergency and, right. and declaring it as such, and then make it a more general thing when the governor's all order is in, in effect, uh, instead of reference to uh, COVID-19 related. I don't know quite how you, I didn't think about specific language, but that would make it more applicable generally to public health emergencies like we're under currently, um, regardless of when they occur. And you can have another emergency order when that happens right. too, you know. So what for now, what have we my suggestion would be for now we pull this out of the changes to our permanent rules and vote on this. Can we pass the, an emergency rule based on this without further publication? Um well we have to look at the ability to do it. Yeah. But because of the emergency declaration, uh, we weren't able to meet, we were able to uh, we weren't able to uh, yeah, because of the emergency, because we couldn't meet that we were able to have that one. The so emergency, the emergency, emergency meeting, and the emergency rules were, were quickly promulgated in order to address the COVID nineteen situation in March. And the emergency rule, that emergency rule, is still into a, in effect until the end of this year. It's still in effect through uh, twenty. Yeah. Well, the, the emergency rules in effect through September fifteenth of twenty twenty, unless it's Extended. So, it's extended. Okay, right. so the changes in this document was to extend it to the December 31st date, so we would just need to. I think this only, this December 31st date only applies to this specific change. Right. Correct, and, and it's, a, it's an attempt to to get into regular operating rules. Um, sunset, the, the Chapter 21 emergency rules, incorporate as many changes as possible so that Chapter 21 could sunset, and then if we need be, we could make amendments to the existing rules, we can repeal existing rules, we can modify regular rules, but um, there wouldn't be a need for most of the other provisions of the emergency rules if we adopt all the changes today. Yeah, but, but by all means, we can, we can operate under any framework that you would like. I, I just don't, personally, I just don't like the notion of having a rule with a sunset provision in it in our general rules as opposed to having it as part of um, the emergency type rules that we already have. That, that's just my feeling. I mean, I'm an expert. I think we uh, delete this and then extend it as an, as an emergency sure. rule under the rules that we currently have and extend at least this portion to cover uh, child care um, as an emergency rule extension of what we already have. That, that's what I was trying to inarticulate. Okay. 
That's a little bit earlier. Okay, so my suggestions to, would be then the, the changes that I, I suggested to delete this as a permanent rule change and that we would pass this as an emergency, uh, as a temporary rule to, uh, to affect uh, the changes proposed in paragraph 5 of 1113A5. Is there, any, is, sorry, is there anything else in 11 that we're changing, or is that it? Uh, we are also looking at yes. some changes to 11.131, but that's all the changes. And, and, and a new rule of 1135. 1135. Right. So that was all the changes I had to 11.13. Uh, suggested by our chairman uh, with uh, the further um, deletion of the uh, rule 2.6, uh, excuse me, 11.13A5 uh, with the deletion of that uh, as an additional uh, change with the adoption of the other recommendations. At this point, we need to simply vote on whether we will adopt the amendments to the proposed rules. We'll then open the public comment, and then we'll vote on whether to approve them. I would so move. And I think we have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Any public comment? Seeing none, we will now entertain a motion to adopt the final version of the proposed rules as so changed. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So I don't think the motion included the adoption of 11.13A5 as a temporary rule, so we'll entertain a motion. No. That, that would be uh, the third item on the agenda, I believe. I'm sorry? So item number three under regular business would then be to consider any items uh, left over. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll consider those. As, we'll consider that as a leftover. Yeah. Leftovers are good sometimes. All right. All right. So what do we have next? So we have eleven point thirteen one. Yes. Is that where we are? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, and this, Mr. Chairman, would be uh, an incorporation of uh, the emergency rule twenty one point three. Uh, would be to incorporate the ability for the appointing authority to also use the utilize the enforced sick leave provision in our existing rules when an employee uh, may be uh, exhibiting signs and of, of illness and to avoid the spread of illness in the workplace. Um, and I did have some just suggested word changing, no uh, substantive change. I'll just go ahead and read it. Um, the appointing authority also has discretion to place an employee on, as opposed to using the words, may also utilize uh, leave when there is an apparent need to remove the employee from the workplace to avoid the spread of illness. The employee may be returned to duty at the appointing authority's discretion. However, nothing in, instead of the word under, this provision shall preclude, was added, the employees, uh, added the apostrophe S, and take out the word shall be returned instead of the word returned to duty upon presentation of certificate from a medical doctor or nurse practitioner who, after examining the employee, certifies that the employee is able to perform the essential functions of their position without posing a risk of harm to, take out the word there, put in the word themselves, uh, or the spread of illness to others. It would be my proposed word changing on for that particular provision without changing the substance of it. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we make an amendment to 11.13.1 as uh, stipulated by the chairman. I would second that. Any discussion of that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now we open the public comment on that, and I think. 
And that's why that's the room you wanted to talk about. Um, no. Oh, so 11.13.1? Yes. No, I want to talk about the next one, but thank oh, okay. you. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> any other public comment? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a motion to actually adopt the final version of the proposed rule. I so move. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Chairman, the, the final rule um, under the general circular consideration would be the creation of a new rule 11.35, especially related to COVID 19 health pandemic. Uh, again, as I mentioned uh, in my director's report, uh, the current emergency rules that we have do not uh, permit the state police service employees from utilizing. This special leave that was established in the personal management system uh, in coordination with the division administration and civil service, the special leave public health or special leave quarantine. Uh, and so the adoption of these provisions would enable the timekeepers, DPSHR, uh, and individuals to have some, some level of continuity in addressing processing of special leave as it relates to the situation we're in right now. And I know I did raise some questions, but you answered most of those questions uh, about that. The only other question I'd have would be the same one that I had as to those since it's limited to COVID, might we not just consider, rather than putting this as part of our permanent rules, just adopt a special rule that's related to COVID, which we could do. Would, it, would that require to have a have some type of sunset on it? Um, or is it a little bit. An open if you look to create it under the emergency provisions of Chapter 21, uh, then then it can be then it can be placed there, uh, and the whole chapter has a sunset provision. So the the entire chapter of uh, 21.10, the duration of chapter, it's effective from March 13, 2020. Uh, and until, or upon action of the commission, um, essentially has been extended to September 15th, 2020 at this point, but a further extension could be declared to the end of the year. To the chapter 21 rules. You can permit some to expire and because they're being addressed uh, with the rule changes, uh, and then we can leave others uh, active. But we can do that when we Add these in, we could then extend the ones that we had in there. Yes. Um, we had some members who were affected that had, had to use their own leave. Is that correct? And that is correcting this? Is it, is it retroactive? What the, what the, we made these right through the change. What we proposed with uh, 11, 30, we were proposing with 1135D. Uh, that's not something in the, uh, the, the state civil service provisions that they adopted. Um, they, were, they had a day forward approach with the adoption of their rules when they adopted them in May, or at the end of May or June. Uh, but the provision 1135D would permit a request to reinstate uh, any leave that was charged to an employee due to the um, use of their for COVID-19 or, or to we, be reinstated. We that allowing and that. It, essentially it would convert that to the new leave. We would allow them to use the especially public health leave bucket of paid leave rather than having to come out of their personal life up to the limits set forth in the rule on not hours, which is 15 working days or 120 hours. Chairman, I agree with you. I think the rule needs to be moved to an emergency provision, not a permanent uh, rule assignment for the commission. So um, there's a motion at this point to reject the proposed rule change as a permanent rule change to our uh, current rules. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay. You want to save your public, because this is going to come back again when we move to, to adopt it as a temporary rule. You want to save your comments until we do that? Any other public comment? Okay. All in favor of the proposed rule to reject this change to our permanent rules, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. That takes us to does that take us to the end of the proposed changes issued in the circuit? Yes, it does. Chapter 21, Emergency Rules and Consideration of Sunset Extensions. The provision of those rules are set to expire uh, upon the order of the Commission or on September 15, whichever comes first. And I think at this time, since we're going to be talking about those emergency rules, might be the appropriate time to consider the adoption of the two things that we rejected as general rule changes into uh, to make them part of our chapter 21 emergency rules so the first one of those being the paragraph five that we rejected earlier uh, 11.1385 that we rejected earlier we have a motion to adopt that as a part of chapter 21's emergency rule. Just Mr. Chairman, um, uh, the, the actual the current sick leave expansion uh, under 21.1 in the emergency rules provides that the appointed authority may permit the use of sick leave for the following reasons, 21.1b, to care for a dependent child residing in the household due to school closure related to COVID-19. So it would be an extension of 21.1 rather than necessarily adopting a new rule. Okay. It should okay. achieve the same goal. All right, well, if it achieves the same goal, then certainly we take that. So is there a motion to extend, I'm sorry, what was the rule number? 21.1B. 21.1B to the end of the year, which would have the same effect as adopting what was proposed as 11.1385. So moved. Second. Any, any public discussion? Discussion with commissioners. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, relative to 11.35 that we rejected as part of our permanent rule changes, is there a motion to add it to Chapter 21? I would so move. We have a second. Second. Okay. We'll open up to public discussion. Uh, I'm Mary Ann White, I'm representing the uh, Louisiana State Troopers Association and just wanted to make it clear that the association is in, in favor of this rule. Um, we just have a few comments. Um, one of them is kind of a technical uh, suggested revision. Um, under, well, it's currently 11.35C, so just so you can follow along with me. Um, so as I understand B and C, B um, is a rule that um, would be allowed, and but if there's there's an exhaustion um, component to B. You only get 15 days, whether you're quarantined, whether you're actually sick, or whether you actually test positive. And is it my understanding that that's that's um, the appointing authority doesn't have discretion on that, that that's um, mandatory, that anyone would get that leave automatically? I guess that's, that's my a, question. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's a May rule. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but it is paid leave for the purposes right. of quarantine or um, positive cases of COVID. Okay. And then C, um, my understanding is a rule that would apply after you have exhausted your 15 working days under B. So for instance, you maybe you had to take some time off and then 
you either get symptoms again or, or whatever happens, you get exposed again and you need to be away from work. And so I guess my, my comments uh, on behalf of the association would be that um, it wasn't necessarily clear to me uh, that that was the case when I read this rule. It seemed to me that an asymptomatic employee didn't necessarily get as many days as a symptomatic employee or as a positive employee. And, and I was corrected on that, but I thought it might be a good idea to add some language to make that clear, add some language such as in the event the employee has exhausted the special paid leave entitlement pursuant to section B of this rule, to add that at the beginning and then say the appointing authority may grant time off. Uh, and, and, and keep the rest of the language the same. And then in the second paragraph, um, talks about the 14 calendar days, but as I understand it, that this rule, there's no exhaustion component to this rule, that someone may be, you know, perhaps continually exposed, and each time they're exposed, they are, uh, the pointing authority may allow them to have this paid time off. So to make that clear in the rule, I would just suggest after 14 calendar days that you consider inserting for each occurrence so that there's, um, it's clear that this is 14 days for each occurrence and not 14 days in total. That would be my suggestions on C. I think, I, I feel like that is in keeping with the, the spirit and intent of that rule, but that maybe provides more clarification. Um, and, and I have some suggestions for D, but if you want me to wait, I can wait, or if you're ready to move on to D. Why don't you go ahead and we'll just talk about all of this. All right, D is kind of the retroactive, the reinstatement part, and as um, we heard earlier in the meeting, we have uh, 21 employees, I believe, who would be affected by D. And the LSTA uh, would like to advocate that this rule be automatic. Currently, it's, it's, uh, the appointing authority has to request um, that this happen, has to request the executive director. And I just think that uh, we think that it should be an automatic rule that applies as long as as long as the circumstances are under B or C, that someone who was affected by COVID-19 uh, earlier and didn't get that special paid leave, that they are automatically um, able to get that. And so the, the suggested revision that I have would be just kind of deleting everything, and, and my suggested revision would be all annual or sick leave charged to an employee between the date of issuance of the governor's proclamation order number 43 JBE 2020 and September 10th 2020 that would have qualified under sections B and or C of this rule shall be reinstated. Move the change 
with the suggestions uh, made regarding the uh, the, um, the insertion there, I guess C? B and C. B and C. Uh, that were requested. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Jason, you got the exact changes? Okay. Right. Now let's move our discussion to paragraph D in the public. I was just going to do it all together once we got to that, if that's fair. Um, let's move to the proposed changes to paragraph D. Does the department have any comments relative to that proposed change? Our concern with changing, sorry, Ginger Creek Human Resources Director of WPS. Uh, our concern with changing uh, D to a shall rule is that it takes away the may rule in the previous two provisions. Those are may rules for the appointing authority, and now you're doing a shall rule with an automatic retroactive. Is there a motion to? Adopt the amendment to the proposed rule D. And what is that amendment? The so amendment would make it a mandatory reinstatement as opposed to the way it is currently written as a discretionary request by the department. So, Chairman, my, my question is about it is um, when the appointing authority requests. You see it as a uh, more difficult if the appointing authority requests or the employee requests because we've had some situations in the past when it comes to um, recouping uh, workman's comp time where uh, individuals have told me that uh, their people have dropped the ball, if you will, going up all the way to the chain of command, which is sometimes six people. Um, then it goes over to HR, and then they come to you. So um, that, uh, and, and being that it may be a group of people, of 21 people doing it individually, through the chain of command, um, it may be, it will not be a lump sum or potentially uh, opportunity for you. You have to deal with all of them individually, or they may wait till all of them come in. It may be six months, maybe a year, maybe two years, realistically. Uh, maybe not two years, but I've had people tell me it's taken it's taken seven to eight months after they've sent it up to their uh, their next line supervisor, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, major, lieutenant colonel, etc. So, what are your thoughts on on that? Well, my thoughts in regard to this particular uh, request is, is I believe the agency is tracking the lead usage, and they would be able to from the Resources Office uh, submit a essentially a sort of logo list of names for individuals for requesting approval under 11.35B or whatever the rule number would be for reinstatement of that leave, as they then would be responsible for converting it into a specialty public health rule. So uh, I believe it could be uh, achieved uh, quite promptly with regards to the, with regards to workers' comp. I don't have any insight onto the inner workings of the department, but I know there's, there's sometimes issues with regards to pulling the information needed um, to then submit the request and then have a good chain. But, uh, but every one that has come up has been uh, sufficiently documented to warrant the reinstatement. So unfortunately, in this case, all of them have already been reported up the chain of command uh, because that's something they were requesting all along. So and I think that in this case, um, I think that, that solves my concern. Well, well, so as with that concern being solved, as of yet, we have no motion to adopt the proposed, the amendments to the proposed rule. I have a question. Yes. Uh, this D section is then Let's take an example. I bet it, it, it's uh, they've 
exhausted and taken the, uh, the 14 days, uh, I guess uh, 15 days under. Or 120 hours. Uh, under B. Anyway, it's not 120 hours, 15 working days. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. But in any event, um, uh, and then they've had, they've been exposed under B. They take those 15 days, and then they get another exposure. So they fall under and C for that second exposure. This time they get the COVID virus, and you know they might, if they get a serious case, they might be 60 days, 90 days, maybe more before they can return to work. Now, does that D cover this situation? Is that what it's designed to cover? And you use your do you use your annual and sick leave? Uh, again, I, I believe the the intention of uh, adopting these with the state police service, the division administration, the, the, the sort of budget of <coughs> keeping in mind that the fiscal responsibility to to the, the state. Uh, there was a decision that 120 hours, 50, 15 working days at an average of an eight hour working day, um, would be where the state would pay for up to 15 hours of that under the provision B. So a lot, a lot of those hours, if you would come ill or you sent to quarantine. Um, then under option C, if the individual quarantine is needed to quarantine again, the, the appointing authority has the option of using this special non-chargeable leave or saying, no, we, we've given you 120 hours of paid, uh, you, you can take sick leave. But with regards to, um, but then when you actually, if the individual tests positive for COVID-19, after the 120 days, uh, if they're still out, then they would fall to the earned or accrued sick leave that they, they, that they, they accrue um, and deplete that normally. The uh, option D, as it's currently listed, tries to fill the gap in in individuals that have already taken it. There's 20, now, now identified 21 individuals that have currently used um, what would have been special leave public health or special leave you know, under 1135B that wasn't available to them. So it allows them to be reinstated for their personal leave and then they were able to tap into the, the, the bucket provided by, by the state. It basically puts, makes this retroactive without making it retroactive is what yes. it does. <laughs> okay. um, thank you, Commissioner Crawford. Yeah, I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. That, um, on D, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to look at the first sentence and the second sentence here. As it reads right now, it says the point authority may submit a request to the executive director for reinstatement of annual or sick leave charge to an employee between the dates of issuance of the governor's proclamation order number 43, maybe 2020 through September 13th, 2020. So. It is, if I recall, Ms. White's recommendation was to change the may there to shall. So the appointing authority shall submit a request to the executive director. Is that correct? Is that the first change? Is that no, that was a little bit different. Um, Does it basically do the same thing if I say shall? It just takes the request part out of it. Okay. So it's all annual or sick leave charged to an employee between the date of issuance of the governor's proclamation order number 43 JBE 2020 and September 2020. 10, 2020 that would have qualified under section B and or C of this rule shall be reinstated. That's my suggestion. And I can give you a copy of that if you want to look at okay. it. Okay. I, th I think we're, we're talking about the same thing. I'm, I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible. So if we say the appointing authority shall submit a request to the executive director for reinstatement of annual sick leave to charge the employee between the dates, continue that sentence out that requires the appointing authority to submit that request. You just take the may out and shall. Secondly, in the second sentence, the request for reinstatement, my suggestion would be to say the request for reinstatement, comma, previously granted by the appointing authority. That still allows the May for A and B to be in there. Um, must be for the hours that would have qualified under the section A and B of this rule. Uh, any hour of reinstatement shall be tracked with the department. Um, I had a feeling that the request was to do away with the requirement to come to us at all 
and to make it just an automatic thing that if you fell into this category, it would be automatically done by the department. That, that was a request, but Commissioner Crawford has made a, a different suggestion. Okay. And if, if that's a motion, I'll, I'll ask if there's a second. No, I mean, I'm thinking out loud. White and the difference in what, what I'm saying, and, and I agree. I, I don't think that the commission needs to be bogged down in this minutia of operational administration of the sick leave. Um, I, I would propose, and, and I would ask maybe that, that we work on some language here because we're throwing around a lot of text, and that is that we allow the, the appointing authority to do that on their own, um, and we change the language to reflect with the Troopers Association, we're all in agreement here, and allow the appointing authority uh, to make it a mandatory that they get that time back uh, subject to A and B of this provision. So I would ask the, the administration to craft that language and um, however that needs to be, and maybe craft it the next, before we adjourn, The, the other alternative would be because this is basically a reinstatement provision, we could pass the rule as it's currently written without D, and we could do the reinstatement at, a, at another meeting. Yeah, I just don't, uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want any troopers to be without, if that doesn't put them in a, a position to where they're without funds or without leave time that they've exhausted and those types of things, and that would be my only concern to extend it to the next meeting. We don't have enough of the agenda. We've seen that happen a couple times. Now we're into November. And so that, that would be my only concern, but certainly. Just to, just to address that concern, none of the employees that we're discussing right now have any low leave balances okay. to be affected in that way. So let's do that now. Maybe we just remove that D and we'll pass it as is. So what we need then is we need a motion to adopt the amendments to the proposed rule change uh, which would delete paragraph D and would make the changes that were explained at C and B and C earlier uh, as part of the special rules paragraph 21. I think we probably need a sunset provision on this unless there is well, a... I believe you can adopt it in, and if you retitled it uh, 21.2.1. Uh, instead of 11.35, it would fall into the 21 chapter. And uh, again, we can look at the um, expiration date. But okay. I would recommend. All right. So we would, uh, the, the motion would be to adopt the proposed change that was submitted as proposed rule 11.35 uh, pursuant to the circular changes to that rule as rule 21.2.1 uh, without paragraph D. So moved. Second. Any public discussion without paragraph D? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think now is the time I should ask, should ask for the public discussion. Okay, hearing none, is there now a motion to adopt this as, move my number from Sorry. <laughs> Rule 21.2.1 um, as amended in our discussions. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? With the understanding that we will revisit the issue of paragraph D uh, after the two get together and discuss how we might word that. I'm sorry, the permission problem. No, I was just going to say we'll bring it up. We'll have something from the administration, and by the next meeting, that will be uh, sent to us. Okay. Chairman, don't we need to uh, adopt the discussion about the sunset provisions and when, when this is all going to extend to take place? Yeah, so we can adopt that this is all going to be extended to take place. Chapter 21. Yeah. Yeah. So we still need to adopt the, a new date for the sunset in Chapter 21. 
Correct. So there would be. Uh, and so the different provisions currently, Mr. Chairman, uh, as, I, as I scan through here real quickly, um, the six leave expansion, you, the provision um, B has been extended to the end of the year. You've already done that. Special paid leave. Uh, it will be a as part of the sunset of the entire chapters, that there's not doesn't need to be an individual action on 21.2. Uh, 21.3, part of sick leave that has been successfully placed into a new rule that could ex that could sunset or be uh, repealed. So we can sunset; it won't have an adverse or, effect because we just added it to the new correct. Rule. You can repeal uh, 21.3. Just make a general motion that any rules that remain in chapter.